Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash spookshow. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Inside the junk hole. Oh, my goodness. Well, sometimes that is better. It just tastes so damn good. Stargirl. Wolfman's got Nars. Kill her, Mommy. <laughs> Here's Johnny. Thou art the one. What? Star Child. What the hell did we just watch? The All American Spook Show Podcast. Hello and welcome to yet another edition of the All American Spook Show Horror Podcast. As always, I'm joined here with my friends Donnie. Hey. And the Professor Smoke. Up. Will could not be with us. He's on assignment, but he will be joining us a little bit later on in the program. So uh, he won't be here for the beginning, but he will be here toward the end to give his thoughts on the movie and give his star rating and everything. So just hold on the line if you're waiting for Willie. Just <laughs> stick with us. He'll be here eventually. But he's just not here for the for the beginning part. He had some stuff he had to do. So he had a, he had a half assignment to complete the day. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, today we're here to uh, talk about our latest movie review, and that is Halloween Kills from 2021. So uh, that's the, the the latest and greatest movie, you know, horror release here in the month of October. It's a it's a big one. So we figured we would uh, devote some time to uh, do a review and talk about this movie because I'm sure we're all going to have a few things to say about this one. I, I wouldn't say it's divisive or anything like that, but I'm sure there's going to be deferring opinions and. Uh, mm. it, it'll be interesting to see where we land on this one. That, that's for sure. Cause I, I think that's kind of been the, the consensus that I have found among, uh, you know, opinions that I've seen so far from other people. It's kind of been up and down side to side. So <laughs> we'll see what and, we all, we all think. You know, something, uh, that, you know, and typically we would talk off, uh, kind of offline about, you know, the movie or whatever this, we have not done that no. with this one. No, we, we, I think we, uh, I, I kind of purposely didn't want to really talk about it, you know, too yeah, much. Uh, same. But I think we've all kind of been the same way. Like you said, uh, just let's stay away from talking about it until we're, you know, all here and have this open forum discussion about it. So yep. um, before we dive deep into it and the background information that we, you know, we always do, I'll go ahead and toss to the usual information. You can email us, contact us, whatever, there at allamericanspookshow at gmail.com. And of course, you can do the same thing if you don't want to do. The old, uh, you know, nowadays emails become old school, right? It used to be like snail mail was the old school thing. Now that's that's old old school. Email is old school now. Most people just DM people on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the like. But we can you can find us there. Twitter at a spook show. All mm-hmm. America, search for uh, whatever the hell that was. I think a rogue Sorry, elephant just man, walked into I, the room. I was I couldn't find my uh, <laughs> I couldn't find the mute button because I was mid sneeze. So a, you let a baby Sorry. elephant into the room. Um, but anyways, yeah, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Slasher app by searching for All American Spook Show. Of course, we have our YouTube page, All American Spook Show Horror Podcast. You know, you should easily be able to find us there every Wednesday, at least through the month of October. And I think we're going to keep going through November. I, I think it's done. We've had a pretty good reception and it's been going pretty well. So every Wednesday we've been going live with Deadline Horror News. But if not... It's definitely there on Thursdays, as it always has been, you know, since we started doing this uh, back in, what, like May or June, I think is when we started doing it. It's been there on Thursdays, so it'll still be there if, you know, that's your routine and you want to check it out then. But uh, if you want to come over and uh, hang out with us live on Wednesdays, that's when we do it. And uh, we just kind of recently started doing, like, a little bit of a Q&A session with it, too. So um, mm-hmm. if you got any questions, you know, there you want to save for that, throw them, throw them to us on that. It's, uh, it's a fun time we have every Wednesday evening. We usually do it pretty much right at 9 p.m. on mm. Wednesday nights over on our YouTube channel. So check that out. And, of course, we have our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Show, where every Tuesday we have a new video mini And the, the main event there is the Library of the Professor, where Smoke takes you know something from his vast library that you always see in the videos behind him, VHS, DVDs, books, whatever it is, masks, posters, whatever he's got there, a toy, 
you know, we pick it up and we'll talk about it, give reviews, discuss it, whatever. That's over on patreon.com slash AA Spook Show every Tuesday without fail. Um, even one week, uh, Smoke couldn't be there. We had the library of Josh and Donnie. Where we, <laughs> we took something from our <laughs> oh, yeah. our far less vast uh, <laughs> library and we talked about it. So that that was pretty cool. But always something fun, you know, to be had over on Patreon. So, and of course, we have our T Public page where you can get the logoed merchandise. Uh, we have some cool designs on there. We need to get to adding some more on there. I haven't done that in a little while. This Sunday, October thirty first, Halloween, episode eighty. Third anniversary, Halloween Spectacular 2021 comes out. That kind of breaks format from our usual, uh, you know, every Monday at 6 p.m. East. So we're going to be coming out a day early. So it will come out this Halloween, October 31st, at noon, high noon, for our third anniversary Halloween Spectacular. So uh, that, that'll be a fun episode. You, you definitely want to come back and check that out this Sunday. So I guess without any uh, further buildup, we'll go ahead and toss to the trailer for Halloween Kills. What are you guys doing out here? It's Halloween, we've been trick-or-treating. Are you alone? There's a creepy man in a white mask. Where? And he keeps like trying to play hide and seek with us. Where did you see him? Look! Oh Run! Go home now! set the fire. No one told you. <laughs> told me what? Michael Myers is alive. A man couldn't have survived that fire. <laughs> Forty years ago, the boogeyman came for us. We are the survivors of Michael Myers. Glory, what do we do? We fight. Mom, our family will kill him. We're gonna hunt him down and we're gonna put an end to this. He is not gonna stop killing until we stop him. If you track Michael's victims, that's a straight line to Michael's childhood home. All right, so there's that. Like I said, Will isn't here to give his two cents just yet. He'll be here later on in the program. But I guess we'll go ahead and get into kind of our knee-jerk, instant gut reactions to it. Uh, Donnie, I'll toss to you first, you know, without giving your star rating. Where are you at? Oh, man, it was brutal. Uh, and just the brutality of it was just gripping. I, You know, this this is why you – This is, I mean, this is why you come – you know, to the theater to watch, you know, to watch us, mm -hmm. you know, Mike Myers. I mean, shit, it kind of was brutal. It was awesome. But, you know, I'll, I'll save the star rating for later, but, uh, eh, you know, there's, there's some things, eh, some detractors, but, um, overall just overwhelmingly brutal and exactly how I wanted it to be from a, you know, gore and, uh, the kill scenes just basically saved the uh, saved it for me. Professor, what about you? So, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up a little bit to 2018 and mention about when uh you know the first of these new Halloween movies came out and I think I talked about it on a we did that, that particular film on the podcast. I, I was also on a friend of ours, Adam Fortress's podcast, The Film Find, talking about you know talking with Adam about that movie because I just seen it; it had just come out and. For those of you who recall that episode, yeah, if not, I'll uh, you know talk about it here. Is uh, I was kind of disappointed with the first time I saw that movie because 
there was so much buildup there for a lot of things happening. I mean, you got Jamie Lee Curtis coming back. Uh, you got John Carpenter involved a, a little bit more so involved. I mean, of course, he didn't direct it, but you know, he's involved. Uh, uh, so there was a there was a lot of writing on it, kind of a lot of hype for it for me. And I saw it that first time, and I was a bit disappointed by it. Now I, I revisited it, and I think after we when we did our episode on it, I had watched it the second time. So that hype and everything, I'd already seen it. it. I didn't need to, you know, judge it in any other sort of way. So I just went into it with an open mind the second time, and I liked it a little better. And then, and I, you know, I ended up liking. I've seen it probably at least another time after that. So, but this, this movie going into it, you know, I didn't have that expectation. It's already happened. It's already there. What I wanted out of it was a good popcorn action horror, you know, ball through all type flick, and that's pretty much what you get delivered to you. And, and as Donnie said, it was brutal, so I really enjoyed the fact that it was a, this flatter element came back full force. And uh, also, as John, Donnie said, though, there was a little bit of detractors in there for me, too. What would be interesting when we get into this more is to see you know, if those things that detract from it were the same for all of us or not. So, but yeah, yeah I, I, I enjoyed it. It was that popcorn, that horror flick, flasher flick that I, that I was hoping it would be, so I didn't have that. It wasn't overhyped for me to go into it and like just enjoy it, you know. So, and I'll save the rest for when we get into it deeper. I think uh, what you just said pretty much nailed it exactly for me. Like, my expectations were like, okay, I've heard that uh, I'd heard rumblings that this was more brutal, so I, I had that kind of coming in, and it definitely lived up to that. Uh, I, I guess the hype train, the the you know the expectations were not as high for me on this one as it was the first one. But that's probably a good thing, you know. Just pretty much exactly what you just said, you know. Uh, I could kind of lean into it, enjoy it for what it was. I mean, like, and and that's really what you want out of these things. And you know, we'll get deeper into that later on. But like these types of movies, slasher movies, like we just talked about it on our slasher roundtable episode. It's what you want, man. Like, <laughs> you kind of it, it might be a little sick and twisted, right? We I guess we all are in some way, but uh, that's kind of what you want, man. You want brutality and. You want fucked up kill scenes, and uh, yeah, yeah. you know you, you get your price of admission here with this one. And, you know, I, I'll leave it at that. T- going back to the 2018 one for just a second, before we dive into this one, uh, we did talk about that all the way back at episode six. I want to say that was like at the beginning of 2019, so the movie was still pretty fresh. It had only been out for a few months, I think, at that time. Donnie, obviously, you weren't on the show back then, so we don't have a uh, star rating for you on that one. But Will gave that one three and a half stars. Smoke, you gave that one three and a quarter star. And I gave that one three and a half stars. So out of the three of us, cumulatively, it was 3.4 stars uh, out of five. So pretty solid score. Donnie, I mean, you saw that one, right? Or have you seen it lately enough to where you might want to kind of give a star rating on that one? Oh man, no! It's been it's been it's a been little bit. Uh, I I did not rewatch it. Um, do you remember? Lately. Do you remember enjoying that one when it came out, or whenever you yeah. watched it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we had uh, when we were, were doing our uh, uh, library of Josh and Donnie, um, <laughs> we uh, you know I I I had mentioned that if if I enjoy a film, it's at least three stars. Um, if I if I'm going to watch it again, if it's you know if it's a rewatchable movie it's at least three stars um i i'd have to i'd have to give it another watch before i could give a a, you know anything higher than that right now that's fair maybe uh at some point whenever you get around (laughs) to watching it again uh we'll uh just remember to remind us like hey i just watched this uh and then maybe you can give like kind of your fresh star rating on that you know just so we can have it on the book so to speak but i actually sat down and watched the movie for the first time since then uh, right before I watched Halloween Kills, because it, like I said, it had literally been that long. It, had, you know, you're knocking on three years. Well, I guess it has been just pretty much exactly three years since the movie came out. It was less than three years ago when we did that episode, but it's been since then, is my point. So it had been a while, and I kind of forgot a few things about it. So I was like, you know what? Before I watch Halloween Kills, I want to watch this and see, you know, see how I feel about it now. I gave it three and a half stars back then. I, I'm, I'm probably going to stick with that. You know, I know that's not what we're doing right now, but. You know, since it's fresh on my mind, I'll just mention that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's probably about what I, how I felt about it. Um, that movie is a lot slower than this one. That's for sure, and it's definitely far less brutal. Although it has its moments, and, and, and maybe some in some ways the slowness and the 
and the moments of brutality you do get in there are a little more vicious in some ways because you don't get as much of it. But that being said, you know, I, I think... I think this is just my opinion, and that's not getting the star rating on this one yet. I think as a movie, that one's better. I think as a holy shit, brutal slasher film, this one's better. Doesn't mean it's, you know, uh, a bad movie. Just, I think as a movie, I think this the, the first one, you know, that they did a few years ago is better. To that, you can't go far into this without mentioning ratings. And since we don't have a lot of the usual background information, you know, that you would normally have on something that's been out a while, <clears throat> I'll throw this out. On IMDb, it's, it's already got, this is crazy, it's already got 28,000 ratings on IMDb. Um, but it has an even six stars out of ten on IMDb. Mm. So that's you know, that's pretty good. And a Metascore, which, you know, they're, they're the oh, Metacritic, Theirs is like basically, you know, zero to 100 or whatever. It's got a 42. Not so great. And uh, the all-important Rotten Tomatoes. Tomato meter, and this is out of 185 critic reviews, so it's not a small number. It only has 39%, so it's got the little splat next to it. <laughs> and the, But the audience score, and this is over 2,500 verified ratings on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, has 70%. Now, just for comparison's sake, like I said, tomato meter thirty nine, audience score seventy percent. The the fir- the uh, first Halloween of this run from twenty eighteen, it is certified fresh. Tomato meter seventy nine percent. Audience score is exactly the same, seventy percent. It seems that the audiences so far have liked it pretty much just the same, but the critics did not like this one compared to that one. So I think uh, yeah, the funny thing about it is it's kind of like. I don't know why what it's getting criticized for. It's like you're, you're criticizing a slasher movie for being a slasher movie. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, it's sort of a it's a bit of a return to you could say you know some of the the slasher tropes of the '80s are teenagers doing dumb things and getting killed doing dumb things or whatever you know. But I mean, it's kind of hard to criticize a slasher movie when it's being a slasher movie and it's not trying to be anything necessarily else. I think that might be some of the play in there between the audience versus some of these critic scores. They're trying to, uh, their their idea of what it should be maybe is inflated when it's just trying to be a, like I mean, like we talked about, a good popcorn slasher, flatter flip, or return to that kind of a filmmaking. Now, once again, I'll point it out simply because we just talked about this last week in mm-hmm. our Slasher yeah. Roundtable episode. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out what the definition of a slasher film is. Uh, according to now, this is according to Wikipedia, and this is kind of what we had talked about on that episode, uh, uh, because this just kind of gives us a general overview of what a slasher film is. A slasher film is a subgenre of horror films involving a killer stalking and murdering a group of people, usually by use of bladed tools. It's as simple as that. So, right, like you just said, like yeah. <laughs> if that's what you come to see, man, you get it in spades, right? You know, in this one. Yep. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. The, the, that that formula that goes all the way back to, I guess, the late seventies, you know, mid to late seventies or whatever. Is it's usually like high school to college age, you know, guys and girls getting chased around by a dude and killed with a knife or a yep. machete or a axe, you know, like they said, bladed tools. That's what these movies are, and that's what you get. So, like, if you know, if that's your kind of flick, then I think you're going to enjoy this. If uh, slower paced type of stuff is what you're gonna you know what you enjoy then maybe that first one's probably more your cup of cup of tea in my opinion but i think either way they both have their place i would imagine too you know not to get too deep into it just yet but i would imagine some of this has got to do some of maybe the negative attitude i guess you would say or reviews of it might be simply because this movie does feel like it's just setting up one more oh yeah yeah Yeah. in a lot of ways you know like you can tell and that's that's probably part of the reason why we don't see some of the things that we kind of expected to see a little bit mm-hmm. just kind of setting up but yeah uh so i guess that's probably enough build up let's go ahead and get into the you know the cast and crew that way we can get to the movie itself it was directed uh by david gordon green once again he, he's the same guy that directed uh halloween a few years ago he's got 30 directing credits over on imdb and of course they've announced that he's going to be uh heading up the Hellraiser TV series that'll be coming out, you know, sometime in the next few years. But also, he's in pre-production on the Exorcist remake. Um, so this dude's got his hands all over the uh, 
the horror properties, you know, Halloween, Hellraiser, and The Exorcist. He is uh he's rolling on cloud nine horror wise these days. <laughs> but you know, he's got he's got an eclectic mix of movies that he's worked on. I mean, all kinds of different types of movies, like comedies and everything. Like, because uh, he also was a a producer on uh, the movie a movie called George Washington, Nicolas Cage movie called Joe. Uh, another one called Prince Avalanche. I think that one had a uh, Paul Rudd in it. All the way back in 1997, he had a couple. He uh, directed a short film, actually in 97 and 98. His first full feature-length directorial movie was in 2000. That was George Washington. But he also directed Pineapple Express, Your Highness, The Sitter, that that show that was on HBO, Eastbound and Down. So clearly, like Danny McBride, right? You know, <laughs> they run deep. So, like, all that stuff had him in it, you know. He he also directed that other HBO series called Vice Principals that had Danny McBride in it. And the the other one that's currently on HBO, he's, he's got a hand in that one called The Righteous Gemstones. That one's got Danny McBride and John Goodman. Yeah, John yeah. Goodman and a number of others are in that one. Writing credits. Now, of course, you got to give credit to John Carpenter and Deborah Hill because, mm. you know, this is all this is their baby, right? This is their yeah. universe. Well, so, that's their characters. Uh, so yep. they get top bill on the writing credits as far as, they, you know, these are based on characters created by them. But as far as the writers on this one, you've got Scott Teams, Danny McBride, and David Gordon Green. Uh, I think it's pretty much the same team of guys that made the first one. Scott Teams would be best known for uh, writing on Rectify, That Evening Sun, and The Quarry. Uh, he's got 10 writing credits, but Danny McBride and D David Gordon Green you know, were the main, I, I'm assuming, like the main shepherds here on this one and it was also produced by well there's a, a long list sure i'm donnie i'm sure you've seen this because you put you put all these uh list of guys together for our little spreadsheet that you have yep. that keeps mm -hmm. up with uh, who did what but <laughs> there's literally like 15 producers on this damn movie uh but malik akkad this is basically kind of like I, I think that family or whatever kind of owns this stuff right smoke like they kind of yeah, run the halloween first, ship stuff akkad yeah, yeah. Well, this is Malik Akkad, so I'm assuming this is like yeah, his yeah. son or something like that. But yeah, because Mustafa Akkad was the yeah, for the going back to the original in '78. But of course, you got Jason Blum, you know, from Blumhouse. They they they're, they're <laughs> big part of this as well. John Carpenter, even Jamie Lee Curtis was an executive producer on this one. And of course, yep. David Gordon Green and Danny McBride they get executive producer credits. Of course, we've got Jamie Lee Curtis reprising her role as her legendary horror icon role of Lori Strode. Uh, she comes back once again. I mean, what more can you say about Jamie Lee Curtis? I mean, like, besides Halloween, I mean, she she would be known for what True Lies, I guess to a newer generation, that Freaky Friday movie that came out like in the early 2000s, that remake. But I mean, she's got 82 acting credits and uh, and back in her early days, I mean, she was one of the first Scream Queens, right, Smoke? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got Prom Night uh, and Terror Train. The Fog. Yeah. Oh, the late seventies, early eighties, screen queen. Yeah, she she worked on a lot of uh, John Carpenter stuff, The Fog, uh, Halloween, Halloween mm -hmm. Two, which I, I guess John Carpenter. Yeah, John Carpenter had something to do with that one, right? It was three where he bailed out. Oh, slightly, I think he had some. He, well, I know he got the writing and credits and stuff like that on there. I don't think he didn't have a whole lot creative wise. I don't believe to do with it. Uh, part three it was kind of like where he came back into it because you know he wanted to. He wanted to do one without Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. So uh, he had more of a hand in part three than he did in two. Yeah, the funny thing about uh, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, is that, like, that one has nothing to do with Michael Myers. You know, it's infamous for that. And, like, you either love it or hate it. Kind of, you know, it's very divisive, you know, in the horror community, I think, on that one. I think most people oh, yeah. in the horror community like it for what it is. But, like, I think most could agree it shouldn't be called Halloween, right? Because like, it has nothing to do with, <laughs> yeah. with uh, the Michael Myers story. But, like... Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis does appear in that movie, although not on screen. Like, she is the curfew announcer and the telephone operator in Halloween yeah. Three, uncredited. So there, yep. there I, is I think that movie's got more. Of course, it, it's got more of a cult following now than it did then, because at least now, most of the generation coming along know that it's a movie that doesn't have Michael or Myers in it. But when you were a fan back in the '80s, and it came out, you're like, "What is this?" You know, I, when I first saw it, I didn't, I wasn't, not to make this about Halloween Three, but since we were talking about it a little bit, I first saw that, I was like, what the hell is this? No Michael Myers. Why would I even want to watch it? Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, once, that, <laughs> once you get over that, it is. A real, I, I love that movie now. It's yeah, actually I, probably one of my favorite franchises. I agree. That was, my, that was my reaction to it back, back then, you know, when I started watching this stuff. So this was probably the late 80s, yeah. early 90s when I started watching this stuff. 
No. Uh, and uh, my reaction to, to it was like, what the hell? It has nothing to do with that. But I appreciate it for what it is in and of itself. Yeah. You know, I, I think there, it's a fun movie by itself. It just didn't need that Halloween title. They could have just as easily called it Season of the Witch and then called it a day. I think it would have been just as yeah. just as well to do that. But she was also in Escape from New York. So, you know, strong uh, John Carpenter roots there in the early 80s until she kind of I think after, kind of after Halloween, you know, two and three, right? She kind of left the uh, horror, the horror genre behind for a long time there. Like she didn't really do much yeah, with it. Yeah, she didn't really, I mean, I, I think she kind of. I guess she sort of somewhat appreciated the screen queen role, but didn't want to be stereotyped into that. Yeah, I mean, because she didn't really return to it until H two O, you know, in nineteen ninety eight, Halloween H two O, twenty years later, uh, she reprised her role of Laurie Strode in that one. So like, yeah, she just kind of went away. You know, until until those movies came out. So, and then she's kind of dipped her toes back into it. Thankfully, you know, for everybody, I still think it's probably just a somewhat of a one-off as far as these Halloween movies are concerned. I I wouldn't imagine she'd do much more after that. You know, <laughs> as far as how, uh, horror movies are concerned. Judy Greer is Karen. This is uh, Laurie's daughter in the movie. Uh, she would best be known for Thirteen Going on Thirty. Uh, she was an Ant Man, Jurassic World. 27 dresses so all these movies that we love to watch uh, <laughs> uh but she's got 152 acting credits believe it or not that date all the way back to 1997 so she she stays busy i mean to have that many uh acting credits and only be doing it only have been doing it since 1997 that's pretty pretty impressive uh she was also in jawbreaker uh a handful of other movies you know uh, uh mainstream uh, movies, you know, not the kind of stuff that we always watch, but you would de definitely a recognizable face for sure. The the girl that plays her daughter, Allison, is Andy Matichak. Obviously, much younger, doesn't have the uh, the uh, the resume of, that we just read off. She's got 17 acting credits that date back to 2013. She was in a, uh, the television series. 666 Park Avenue. She she played an episode of Orange Is the New Black, episode of Blue Bloods. Another show called The Boonies. I've never heard of that one, but but basically, like ever since Halloween, like she's she's done a handful of other things in that time period. Mm -hmm. But that'd be the the bad that'd be the bigger ones. Other than another horror movie that came out just this year, Sun, which I actually watched, and she's really good in it. Now she plays much older in that one. Like in this one, you know, basically she's a teenager, and in that one, like you know, she's like a twenty-something-year-old mom. But you know that I don't know if you guys have seen that one. Have either of you guys seen Sun yet? I have not. I have not. I would recommend it. I, I, you know, I, I'm sure, once again, we you, always say it, we'll, we'll get to it here on the show, but I would recommend I, it. You, yeah, I remember seeing you uh, post something about that on your uh, on your individual uh, Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I, I just watched it, like, uh, within the last month or so. It was really good. Mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend it. Um, but she's in that, so uh, definitely an up-and-coming face, you know, in, in the horror genre for sure and other movies i'm sure she'll move on to bigger and better things later on she's just kind of getting started but uh already kind of becoming a recognizable face with halloween and son james jude courtney and nick castle and aaron armstrong they all play different versions of the shape in this movie now nick castle is the original shape right smoke he's the original michael myers yeah and the way yeah. i the way i think i understand that they play this is like nick castle is basically who you see when they take the mask off. Mm -hmm. But as far as like the Michael Myers throughout the movie, who's got the mask on and is stalking around killing people. That is James Jude Courtney. And I, and I assume that's just because I mean, you know, uh, his age, yeah. Age in there. Yeah. <laughs> so some my stunts, I guess you could say, I mean, cause there's, I mean, you don't think about these, uh, slasher type movies of, of the killer doing stunts, but I mean, they, they there are stunts in there involved. Like, yeah, the reason we had Kane Hodder playing Jason in part seven, eight, and nine. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 there's a physical demand there, you know, that uh, yeah. it would probably be better to get a younger guy to do it. But So I think that's the way they play that. And Aaron Armstrong plays the shape in the 1978 flashbacks that they do, you know, where they kind of like, uh, mm -hmm. you see the old 1978 version of Michael Myers. That's Aaron Armstrong. Um uh, playing the shape there. So you got three different variations of it in here. Now, he is known for doing stunt work in John Wick, Chapter 3, The Dark Knight Rises, Old Boy, you know, the, the remake from 2013, uh, Okja, 
Uh, he's got 95 stunt credits on IMDb and 25 acting credits uh, on IMDb. So he, he's he's been a busy bee for a while. Uh, his his stunt credits date back to 2010. He was in that movie, the the town. A uh, number of others since then. Olympus has fallen. Uh, like I said, the, the, you know the ones I already mentioned, the Tomorrow People, that series, uh, a number of others. Uh, the series Gotham, Person of Interest, Blue Bloods, tons of TV and movies that he's been a stuntman on. Now, uh, Nick Castle, like I said, he was the original Michael Myers, you know, The Shape from 1978. He's done a number of things in the years since, uh, including writing and directing. I mean, he has 13 writing credits and 14 directing credits in, in the years since. Uh, he actually direct, directed The Last Starfighter in 1984 and The Boy Who Could Fly, an episode of Amazing Stories, one of Donnie's favorites from 1993, Dennis the Menace, <laughs> Ma- Major Pain in 1995. So Nick Castle's had a, an interesting career, no doubt about that. And he was one of the writers on Escape from New York, another John Carpenter film in 1981. Interesting, interesting uh, career that he has had um, in, the, in the years since. And it's cool that they... They really leaned that into that one, into that aspect of it, especially in this one, as far as like bringing back some of the faces from the original movies, which I thought yeah. was a, a pretty cool thing to do in these. Will Patton plays Officer Hawkins again. You know, he reprises his role, although pretty much this entire movie is just laying on a bed, right? <laughs> kind of like Laurie, I guess. Yeah, he has 114 acting credits uh, uh, dating all the way back to... 1979, ironically, you know, right after the original Halloween came out was when he had his first acting role in, in the movie Minus Zero. But he, he's had a number of uh, roles over the years. I mean, he'd be known for No Way Out, The Postman, Armageddon. He had a pretty big role in that. Remember, that was the big Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck flick from back in 1998, The Mothman Prophecies. Thomas Mann plays the young version of Hawkins in this one. He would be known for... Uh, me and Earl and the Dying Girl <laughs> from 2015, <laughs> Project X from 2020, Hansel and Gretel, Witch Hunters, Kong Skull Island. I think I recognize him from that one. But he's got 37 acting credits that go back to 2009. He was in the episode of the TV series I Carly. Well, you've got Anthony Michael Hall as Tommy Doyle. Now, now this is he's playing a character of a kid that was in the original movie. Mm-hmm. In the original movie, he was the little boy that. Uh, Lori was babysitting when Michael Myers, you know, went fucking psycho and killed everybody, right? In later versions of the movie, that that part was played by Paul Rudd and mm-hmm. and the now unrelated Halloween the Curse of Michael Myers. Now I saw something where apparently they actually went to him. They wanted him to, to play the part, but he couldn't because of his uh, at the time he was working on uh Ghostbusters Afterlife. So he couldn't do this but it sounded like they wanted it to happen they just couldn't make it work so they got anthony michael hall to do it Uh, which he does a fine job here you know but uh he is uh, what would you most recognize anthony michael hall from smoke breakfast club of course (laughs) and national lampoon's (laughs) vacation right he was uh he was weird uh, science yeah he was the original rusty (laughs) i think they've had a different rusty in every lampoon movie right he actually was on like a season i think of saturday night live too back then you know, I guess trying to cash in on the, uh, the what, what do they call that? They call them the Brat Pack, right? Like he was part of that, yep. that group, yeah, that group of kids. And he was in Edward Scissorhands, tons of stuff since then. I mean, uh, he, he was even in uh, that series Warehouse 13, uh, Psych, The Dead Zone. Now that one ran for a long time. Yeah, Dead Zone ran for a long time. Yeah, I think that was on Sci-Fi, right? Tons of stuff he's worked mm-hmm. on since then. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting that they tried to get Paul Rudd to do it again, but like. It just didn't work out. Now, like, that series of movies doesn't count, right? You know, like, as far as, like, in this timeline of things, it's basically, like, the original from 1978, then you jump to the one from to, uh, that came out in 2018, and now this one. So, technically, in this timeline, this is Halloween 3. Even you know, even though there's a lot of nods, even there's nods to, and we'll, I know we'll get into those as they happen, to Halloween 2 and 3 uh, that I saw in there. So, they're, like, discarding those movies as far as plot lines. There are definitely Easter eggs that pop up. Robert Longstreet plays Lonnie Elam. Uh, this is, now in the movie he is Cameron's father. You know, Cameron is uh, Lori's granddaughter, uh, Allison. That's her boyfriend. They have like flashbacks to where basically he was bullied by Tommy Doyle 
as a child in 1978. That that kid was in the movie, but obviously not that same kid, right? Like the flashbacks, it, that's not like a flashback from the movie. They made a new flashback for that. Like all this kind of shit's kind of confusing because of the way they did it and the way they had to recast some of these and like stay with the same casting on others. Tristan Eggerling is young Lonnie, you know, in those flashbacks. But in the original, 1978, that kid was played by Brent LePage. Of course, Dylan Arnold plays Cameron. That was, you know, who I just alluded to, Alex's, Allison's boyfriend, Lonnie's son. Charles Cyphers as Lee Brackett, now Officer Brackett, was the former sheriff of Haddonfield, you know, in the movies, who his daughter was killed in the original 1978 movie. Remember, he was the cop that was basically kind of side-by-side side with Loomis in the original movie. This guy, uh, Charles Cyphers, was actually in that movie, and he, so he's reprising his role from the 1978 original in this one. And, of course, he was in Halloween 2, which doesn't count anymore. So you see what I'm saying? Like, it's like the shell game. Like, well, this one counts, that one don't, this one counts. But, yeah, he was, he was in the original. Another one from the original movie, Kyle Richards plays Lindsay Wallace. Now, Lindsay was the other kid that Lawyer was babysitting in 1978. Uh, she is actually reprising her role from the 1978 original here. Now, it, just uh, to point out who she was in the movie, she's the dark-haired lady. I think she had black hair who, uh, like, tells the kids to get the hell out of there when they go to the playground. That's her. And another one, Nancy Stevens plays Marion Chambers, who is the nurse, right? She was like Loomis's assistant or something, right, in the original and I think they even show that brief flashback, like she's the nurse in the car or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, she was also in Halloween 2 and Halloween H2O, which now don't count. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess uh, the only other ones that kind of uh, stood out to me uh, as far as interesting casting was uh, the roles of Big John and Little John. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The uh, uh, the couple that live in Michael Myers' old house. Big John, that's played by Scott MacArthur. And Little John, that is Michael McDonald. Now, a lot of people might remember Michael McDonald from Mad TV back in the 90s and early 2000s. And uh, people may have seen the memes going around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen a few. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, Stuart uh, and Michael Myers. And, of course, in a much small ancillary way, P.J. Souls appears in this movie... Uh, but it's just archive footage from the original movie. Mm. Um, remember, she died in that movie, so obviously she can't be in this movie, you know, as current, you know, 40 years later or whatever. But, like, yeah, there I'm is fun. an archive footage of her, so she's you know, in the movie. And uh, I thought this was interesting. Bob Odenkirk, you know, from Better Call Saul and uh, Mr. Show and all that, you know, he actually has a cameo appearance in a photograph as Bob Sims one of Michael Myers' victims from the 1978 film. The producers, what I read here, were not able to secure the likeness of the original actor, John Michael Graham, for the movie, so instead they used a real high school yearbook photo of Bob Odenkirk after discovering That's their awesome. resemblance. <laughs> so, that is awesome. So Bob Odenkirk has a small role just like in a picture in this movie. So that's random, but that's pretty good. So I guess really that's all I had as far as the background information. Did you guys have anything else you wanted to point out before we got into it? Uh, well, just that uh, the soundtrack, uh, John Carpenter returned for that, and it, with his son Cody Carpenter, and I believe uh, the other guy. I mean, he's not related, but I believe Daniel Davies might be his name. And it's as you would expect of it to be, you know, for a Halloween movie, very synth driven. I think that was definitely worth noting. Uh, I will point out that this movie was delayed by the pandemic because this was actually supposed to come out. October of last year, October of 2020, mm. 2020, but they delayed it to this year, so that's why we're just now seeing this, and then, of course, that delays Halloween Ends, which was supposed to come out this year, which now comes out next year, uh, but I'll point out, basically, as of, these are the numbers that we, has, uh, that we have as of October 19th, Halloween Kills has grossed $54.9 million in the United States and Canada, and $5.5 million in other territories for a total worldwide of 60.4. That's just basically it's opening four or five days there. So off to a great start. Yeah, and just kind of piggybacking off of, uh, you know, what you mentioned. Uh, I did read where um, uh, it was initially planned that uh, Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends would uh, be filmed back to back. It didn't happen due to what they, they called a intense work schedule. Apparently, like, I guess they kind of changed up what the story was going to be because of that, too. Because apparently now uh, the movie that we see next year will be uh, 
four years later. Yeah, I did see that as yeah, well. Because I guess it was supposed to be kind of like all in the same night kind of thing, but now they, I guess they kind of reassessed, and now it's going to be a like time jump. You know, so 2018 to 2022. Apparently, it will address the COVID 19 pandemic. Like, there, there's going to be some aspect of that. Like, <laughs> well, that uh, Michael Myers went on a killing spree. Man, can you believe the pandemic happened? Now here we are. You know, <laughs> I don't know how the <laughs> hell they're going to tie that in, but apparently, it's going to have something to do with it. But anyways, getting back to the box office there for just a second, it. It made well past what their apparently what their expectations were for the opening weekend. I think they were originally thinking it would make like somewhere around the twenty five to thirty million dollar range and it ended up topping fifty million so that was that made it uh and that was after twenty two point eight million on its first day including pre, uh, including previews and it made almost five million on the Thursday night previews so that made it the biggest uh r-rated title and horror film title released during the pandemic as far as wow. money money made because it just passed the quiet place too uh it made just a little bit more on the previews you know on, on that first day so it's the highest grossing r-rated film and horror film since the pandemic be- pandemic began so i thought that was pretty pretty cool and worth mentioning for sure and uh it also uh uh, that fifty point five million that it made in its opening weekend there, that marked the best opening for an R-rated film amid the pandemic, uh, doubling the Suicide Squad's twenty six point two million. So mm. this by far has been the most successful R-rated and horror movie uh, since the pandemic began, and uh, basically I guess since March of twenty twenty. So pretty impressive. Why fuss and fret about dinner? Why not have it right here? Yes, this drive-in offers everyone in the family a real picnic treat for dinner. We've got delicious sandwiches with all the trimmings and your other dinner favorites, plus whatever you want to drink, hot or cold. Come early before the show starts, or eat while you're being entertained, or at intermission time. So why fuss? Give your family a tasty dinner at this drive-in. For you, the listeners of the All-American Spook Show podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Like we've always said before, you, you use audibletrial.com slash spookshow. You sign up, they'll give you a credit. You can take that credit and get a, a, any audiobook of your choice there on Audible. If you cancel it right after that, you get to keep the book. So you get something and it helps us out. Win-win for everybody. And uh, since we're on the subject of uh, Halloween Kills, we looked it up and sure enough, there it is. Halloween Kills, the official movie novelization by Tim Wagoner, narrated by Bronson Pinchot. I guess that's how you say his last name, right? Pinchot? Yeah. 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 That's the same guy that played uh, Balky in, uh, well, God, now I'm blanking on the name of the show, Perfect Strangers, right? Yeah, Perfect yeah, Strangers. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Like, of all the people you get to read the Halloween Kills movie novelization you get balky from perfect strangers but that's just slightly over eight hours long there on audible and of course you know all all those type of things i mean if you just type in halloween on audible you're you're gonna get more than your uh, money's worth of uh <laughs> choices there uh, i just popped it in you've got the original uh, not the original but the 2018 uh official movie novelization uh that one is by john passarelli and narrated by Emily Sutton Smith, so at least they didn't get him to do that one <laughs> two times in a row. Taking Shape, Developing Halloween from Script to Screen by Dustin McNeil and Travis Mullins. That's narrated by Christian Francis. That one's 13 hours long. I guess that's basically kind of going into the film. Maybe was, like the origin. Yeah, yeah, like uh, how the film was made and everything, like kind of an mm-hmm. audiobook version of the behind the scenes and how they went from script to screen, you know, literally in the title there. So the, that sounds like a pretty cool... Uh, listen to there on audible so uh if any of that interests you of course to, to go to download your free audiobook from audible go to audibletrial.com slash book show again that is audibletrial.com slash book show for your free audiobook all right so i guess with all the background and everything that we could possibly find you know at this early stage you know there's not as much shit to talk about you know since this movie hasn't been out for a while you know you don't get the number the hard numbers like we normally do but i think we covered it all pretty well you know so uh we'll move into the uh the film itself now um i didn't take i i really actually wanted to sit there and enjoy the movie for what it was and i didn't have enough time to watch it twice so like i didn't make my deep notes that i normally make here so you know feel free to jump in anytime Mm. If I'm forgetting something or whatever as we go along here. But basically the movie, I think it pretty much picks up right where we left off, right? Uh, at the very beginning. 
when this is basically goes back to 2018. So this is Halloween 2018. Cameron, Allison's boyfriend, uh, is found finds uh, Deputy Hawkins, who's like laying on the side of the road after he'd been like stabbed and left to die by Dr. Sartain. Remember from the original movie. Um, and he mm. helps save his life. And when Hawkins wakes up, they kind of have like this flashback of 40 years earlier. So you go back to 1978 when they're looking for Michael Myers. Now I'm trying to like smoke. Maybe that, maybe you might remember some of this a little bit better than I'm remembering it. Like the timeline of things from the original movie to what they present here. And, I mean, I'm sure they did their work and they, you know, they, they made it fit, but it didn't seem, I, I guess maybe would this be what you s- would have seen after the movie ended? Yeah. Kind of after Loomis shoots Michael six times, remember that I shot him six times. You know? Yeah. And then he falls out of the window. Right. And then he <laughs> yeah. looks back down yeah, and he's down gone. And he's yeah. So I'm, yes, this is where it's kind of fitting in after that fact that what we didn't see after that part of uh, the original Halloween and yeah. tying, kind of tying loose ends, trying to tie somewhat loose ends, or just, you know, things that he just left on the set at the time, trying to, trying to make those connections for this movie. Yeah, yeah. Trying, to, possibly trying to make the threads where there, where there yeah. really wasn't any, and on, on top of that, kind of undoing the stuff from uh, the original Halloween 2, right? Like, because that yeah. didn't happen, so we need to... We mentioned before in the other movie, when we were, you know, because originally, you know, that. They made Jamie Lee Curtis and him be brother and sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As the sequels went on. So, yeah, they, they, of course, did away with that whole timeline. Yeah, they, they retconned bottom. that out. So that didn't ever, that never happened. So that's what you see. You see this flashback of uh, uh, they're back at the Myers house and Hawkins accidentally shoots his partner as they're trying to get Michael. Like, Michael comes up behind his partner and he, he's like, shoot him. And he shoots and, like, shoots his partner, like, right in the throat. Or right, you know, <laughs> right, not not like through the throat, but like right on the side. But so basically he bleeds out, right? And this is right before you see Dr. Loomis, you know, coming in like, what happened in there, you know, whatever. Um, I, I also, I thought the Dr. Loomis stuff was pretty damn well done. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looked just photo, like him. A photo from the set of the guy, and I can't think of the name of, the name of him. And he looked, you know, very similar to him. And then, of yeah. course, they did. Like, yeah, I, I think they did a hell of a job. With uh, yeah. rec- recreating uh, uh, Donald Pleasance, you know, Dr. Loomis here for this. Mm. And then you basically see them kind of like take Michael down. So I guess this is like kind of seeing how they stopped him the first time and uh, put him away for 40 years. And then basically uh, Hawkins says like, uh, you know, he resolves to kill him um, because of all this, you know, because of his flashback and, and all the things that have happened. Like I'm going to be the one that takes out Michael Myers. So then you go to like, there's like a bar and they're like having a Halloween talent show or whatever the hell's going on in this bar. And uh, Tommy Doyle and a few of the other survivors have met there and they're kind of celebrating the fact that, you know, Michael's uh, been put away for 40 years. It's the 40th anniversary. Um, so this is where you see Marion Chambers, Lindsay Wallace, and uh, Lonnie, uh, you know, who all had their little flashback memories of uh, encountering Michael back in 1978. And they give a toast to Lori. Meanwhile, Lori's like in the hospital. Uh, recovering from, uh, you know, getting stabbed in the gut by Michael, you know, mm. from the last movie. And that's pretty much where she's at the entire film, right? Like, <laughs> her and Hawkins are pretty much just laid up in the in the hospital this entire movie. <laughs> Not to spoil what happens there, you know, but basically they're bedridden the entire <laughs> the entire movie. Um, yeah, until, uh, you know, their grandson comes over with a golden ticket for uh, Willy Wonka's <laughs> chocolate factory, and then they get up and start dancing. dancing yeah, and then they're okay. Um, so a group of firefighters, uh, Lori's house is burning to the ground. So basically you're coming back to the very end of the last movie that we just saw. The house is on fire. Lori and, uh, Allison, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, Lori and her daughter and her granddaughter, you know, they're taking off in the back of that truck and then the firefighters go by and she's like, let it burn. (laughs) Let the motherfucker burn. But Michael, remember they had pinned him down like in the basement. And basically let the house burn around him. Uh, well, the firefighters show up and uh, uh, unwittingly basically save Michael Myers. And then he, he goes on a damn killing spree right then and there. You see the brutality right out the gates, right? I mean, he just lays out like 10 firefighters one after another when he comes out of there. Like with the, with the big pickaxe and uh, all manner of ways. He just kills them all. 
and, and that uh what is it like the jaws of life whatever the hell they call that that big chainsaw that they have i'm not sure exactly yeah. what you would call that but he turns it on him of course <laughs> i knew as soon as like the guy like pulled it out and revved it up i'm like oh hell <laughs> that's gonna go right up his ass Lori. And her daughter, Karen, that's her name, and her granddaughter is Allison. Uh, they go to the hospital where uh, Lori has to have, like, emergency surgery from, you know, basically getting, you know, gutted damn near it in her stomach. Michael, like, right right after, like, basically right after this, Michael murders Lori's neighbors, uh, Sandra and Phil, before making his way deeper into Haddonfield. So, basically, he's just going on a killing spree. An emergency newscast comes on, and, like, Tommy and Marion and all the rest, they see this before they realize, like, they need to get out of the bar and like go take Michael down because he's loose. Vanessa, who who's like this, <laughs> there's like this couple who's dressed like a nurse and a doctor, and <laughs> but in reality, like she's the doctor and he's the nurse. But <laughs> they did like the role reversal, r- role reversal costumes for Halloween. Um, she gets in the car and she believes she sees Michael in the back seat. That's when they all kind of come out and uh, the car just kind of like turns on and drives away and then like immediately crashes. And then they go over there and there's no driver in it. But it's not him. It turns out it's that, that guy, uh, I think his name is Lance. The the guy is another one of the guys that escaped from the mental institution that night. But he escapes unnoticed, so they just figure that was Michael Myers. Lonnie goes and gets Cameron and uh, Tommy Doyle, and they form basically like a pitchfork mob to go uh, hunt down and kill Michael. The police tell Karen and Allison that Michael escaped, but they want to keep it away from Lori. You know, since she's, uh, you know, hurting in the hospital there. And they, they know she's just going to get up and do something stupid. So they try to, you know, save her from that so they don't tell her about it right away. So Allison, you know, they kind of patch things up with Cameron. And then they go with his dad to go hunt down Michael, uh, you know, with the rest of the mob. They're all kind of spread out everywhere looking for Michael. Lori and uh, Hawkins, who, you know, basically are now, like, sharing a hospital room. I guess because the hospital is so busy they've got two people in the same room <laughs> and it just so happens that it's lawyer Lori and hawkins in the same room they both kind of have like this little reminiscent moment about you know a fact that i guess there's basically like a relationship that never really took off uh back in the day Lindsay, who i mentioned earlier uh runs into two like teenagers in the park and she tells like hey look michael myers is loose get the fuck out of here she's like well there's this guy who's been playing peekaboo with us over there he's wearing a white mask and you look over and he's he's there in the park uh, also, did you notice their masks? Yeah, the, that was one of the nods right there to Halloween 3. Mm-hmm. They had the, like, the pumpkin, the witch, and the skull mask. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the silver shamrock mask. <laughs> I was kind of yeah, looking to see if they actually had like the silver shamrock thing on the back of it, but I, I couldn't tell. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't see it in the theater, and I still could. I didn't notice they had that yeah, on there. Yeah. Not. But Michael Myers is standing across the way, and he's holding that bloody mask of their friend who... Yeah, he's holding that skull mask, and it's like dripping blood. So clearly, he's done got a hold of their friend and killed him. Lindsay, Marion, and Vanessa, you know, uh, and her husband Marcus, you know, these that's the couple that are dressed like the uh, the nurse and the doctor or whatever. They get ambushed by Michael in the park, like because they're all in the same car, and pretty much all of them are killed except for Lindsay, who manages to escape. Like she kind of hides, like on the side of a like in the root of a tree or something like that. Then Allison, Cameron, and Tommy and and Lonnie show up. And find all the bodies of the others that we just mentioned on the playground. And they're all wearing those masks. And they had just, these are the same kids that had pranked Big John and Little John, the current owners of Michael Myers' childhood home. So uh, <laughs> there's the, the connective threads throughout the movie there because, you know, you're introduced to them and they pranked them or whatever. And they kind of pranked them back by scaring the shit out of them. But they find Lindsay you know, hurt, but she's alive and they take her to the hospital. Tommy takes her to the hospital. Lonnie, Cameron, and Allison, they decide like, look, Michael's going back to his house. So that's where we need to go. So then Tommy reunites with former Sheriff Brackett there, Lee Brackett, whose daughter Annie was killed back in the original movie. He tells him that Michael's still alive. So now like, you know, they're kind of getting the mob back together. Meanwhile, Michael murders Big John and Little John in the house there's that whole scene like right he kind of going through the house he kills uh big john first and then little john Lori uh finds out that michael is still alive like they didn't kill him so now she's about to leave the hospital to go track him down but they they managed to get her to stay after like they have this whole scene where like that guy lance you know the, the other guy who escaped from uh the mental asylum 
uh, he comes into the hospital, and then like the mob basically, like, hey, that's Michael, and then they they literally just like chase the guy all the way up like five five flights of stairs up to the top of the hospital, and then Karen tries to help the guy, but then he like busts out a window and just basically just jumps out, and it's fucking brutal, you know, like like a lot of the other shit in this movie, it's just mm-hmm. like dude goes head first <laughs> straight into the concrete. Uh, this is when they realize, oh shit, that's not Michael. <laughs> So what are they trying to do here? Is this like like Michael has turned us into the monster? Is that like the whole hidden meaning behind all this? Yeah, I think it's well. This is one of those scenes where I mentioned when I was talking about it too earlier, where they kind of detracted from it for me. <laughs> was this whole subplot of I think I think it had to do with the rage, like just showing how people can be influenced by rage mm-hmm. to do something, take revenge, and then it turns out being not what you thought or the person you thought it was or whatever, you know. Uh, but yeah, I think it was a, a social commentary on rage, I guess. Yeah, just, uh... But yeah, they kind of side- sidetracked the whole movie for me right there, and that whole... Because that was a long scene <laughs> to get mm-hmm. to where... Yeah. Point to point B. Now, the payoff was the gore. The payoff in that scene was the gore scene, because that yeah. was, like you said, it was pretty brutal. Oh yeah, they didn't shy away from it. Like, this dude takes a <laughs> header into the damn... <laughs> into the <laughs> asphalt, and there it is. Uh, but yeah, I think, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think that's kind of what they were going for, like... You know, don't let the mob mentality rule you, kind of thing. You know, blah blah blah. You know, but it, it does kind of, uh, it is kind of a out of left field kind of moment, really, with the whole flow of the movie. And especially at half the time, you're like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, like, why is this important? You know, and then eventually, you're like, oh, okay, all right. Anyways, back to the movie. You know, <laughs> he was in the 2018 movie, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think he was one of the guys that was, uh, you know, running around like they got off the bus. Yeah, I think it was like the same dude, yeah. but. Um, so they tied in. I didn't realize that at first until later, because uh, we, when we, me and my wife went to see it, we didn't we wa- we didn't rewatch part uh, what well, the first one, the 2018. We should have because of all the things that tie together with it, and didn't realize till later that yeah he was in 2018 yeah. when running around. Yeah. And one, and once again, this is like I said earlier. Like I did watch the, the you know that one right before this, and I will say they did they did a seamless job. Of connecting these two movies, they really did. I know it's been a while that you, since y'all watched it, but when mm-hmm. you watch it, you'll see, man. Like it's like, it's like the movie just kept going. It's it's pretty fucking seamless, other than you know, a couple of random scenes and the flashbacks and stuff. But as mm-hmm. far as like the the same day aspect of it, yeah, they nailed it. So back at uh, the Myers house, uh, Lonnie goes in and heads in, and then like pretty much instantly gets taken out, right? Like. <laughs> he's like, I'll see you on the other side. And then he's in there for like two seconds and then bow. <laughs> and then Cameron and Allison go in and then they find big John and little John dead. And then they eventually find Lonnie's body like stuffed into the attic, like hanging out of the attic door. And then they are attacked. They're like instantly attacked by Michael. Uh, Allison falls down the steps, breaks her leg. Cameron, he just beats the shit out of Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, I think they, they stab him. He stabs them. Like it's just, it's a big fight, and they they just he just beats the shit out of Cameron until like uh, like he busts his head to the side of the steps, and then like just you know just bashes his head in basically. And then as he's walking by, like she's like, "No, please don't hurt him." As she's trying to like you know get him away from Cameron, he just turns around and snaps his neck, and then keeps coming for her. <laughs> so once again, brutal as hell. So he's about to kill Allison when Karen, her mom, uh, shows up and stabs him right in the back with a pitchfork takes his mask off and then like basically gets her to chase him or gets him to chase her uh, to where like basically she has lured him into the, you know, Tommy Doyle's mob Mm -hmm. there out in the middle of the street. So they've all surrounded him. They basically just beat the shit out of him, stab him, shoot him. Uh, It looks like he's dead. And then Karen goes and reunites with Allison. You know, the former Sheriff Brackett there, he's about to shoot Michael in the head. Then all of a sudden Michael wakes up and then just slaughters the rest of the mob that are still there, like, uh, surrounding him, uh, including Brackett and Tommy Doyle. Like, he kills them all. Then back at the Myers house, Allison, you know, is getting looked at, you know, by the uh, the doctor or whatever, or the uh, EMS guys. And uh, Karen looks up in the window and swears, like, I guess, like she sees a younger version of Michael looking out of the bedroom window. So she goes up to investigate, and then Michael steps up behind her and stabs her to death. And that's basically how it ends is like Lori staring out of the window of her hospital room and Michael staring out that window of the Myers house again. 
Halloween Kills. Roll credits. All right, so that's Halloween Kills. So all, with all that out of the way, Will has finally come off of assignment, and he can now join us and uh, be a part of the podcast here. So we, <laughs> so now we can toss to, you know, or we can get to our, our star ratings, what we all thought about the movie. So, Donnie, I guess I'll start with you. Uh, what's your star rating? What'd you think? Star rating, I guess, if I got to start with that. Um, actually, I'll start with uh, kind of what I, th- I thought of it. I like the pacing of it. Uh, it doesn't really hang around too long to where you kind of get bored in one spot, uh, at least in the story or anything. Uh, it kicks into gear in the right places. And I, you know, like I mentioned, the pacing, I, I think it's timed well. You know, another plus for me is uh, the music from, you know, the iconic theme to other, you know, scores within the film. Very haunting. Um, you know, if I can say this, uh, this is the rug that really ties the room together, dude. But, you know, also another plus for me is the kills. This is you know why you why you watch a movie like this uh you know it's why you uh you know exactly what you're getting when you when you watch halloween um, but you know this this specific one uh imaginatively brutal uh i i do like the different aspects of it you know uh you've got the first person you've got the third person um some of the detractors like we, we had mentioned previously uh, there's not much of a plot but you know also, to its credit, uh, it kind of works to its favor. Uh, you kind of know what you're getting here to where you don't really need it much. Um, another detractor, and maybe I'm desensitized to it, but there's not really a whole lot of suspense or, you know, I guess it's just not really there. Um, another detractor would also be um, Lori Strode. Uh, I know she's kind of holed up in the hospital uh, she's basically bedridden for the whole movie. I would have liked to have seen more from her, but you know, I guess that's the miss- missing uh, suspense that's uh, kind of sets up Halloween ends. Um, my star rating is three and a half. I, yeah, the it was the kills that really got me uh, uh, energized and you know got that uh, three and a half star rating for me. Will, I'm going to go ahead and toss to you what, you know, you can you can go a little longer if you want since you haven't been here the entire episode. Just give your thoughts about it, anything you want to point out, and give us your star rating and everything. It was good. That is all. <laughs> well, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Will, for joining us today uh, on the next book show. This was not lifted from a previous podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, that'd be uh, awesome I'll if go. we, before you continue, that'd be awesome <laughs> if we just pull the audio of you talking about, like, I don't know, the original Halloween Previous from a couple Halloween. years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even better if it's not Halloween. Just something like Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter. So what what'd you think about this? Man, I'll tell you what, Matthew Stafford did really well today. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, but um, I, I'm going to go with three and three quarter stars. I agree with a lot of what Donna said. There, there were, was a couple of odd things. There was one part of the score uh, since you had talked about that where I, I believe it was right around the time that uh, they're, they're about to throw down with uh, all the people in the neighborhood, where it was like a almost like a synthetic spinoff of the, the traditional Halloween. Did not like it. Like It sounded like it was about to go that way, and then it just went all synthetic, and I was just like, this, it, it took me out of, out of uh, the movie for a second because it, it just sent so out of place. But yeah, j- just like Donnie said, like there wasn't a ton of suspense in this one. You know, it was more here he comes and this is what he's going to do. I, I think the fact that he's brutal and he lays everybody out, uh, this movie probably resonates with me a little bit more than say something like All Hallows Eve where uh, Art the Clown is following maybe like two or three people it's very slow paced and you know it's supposed to make you cringe when you watch that stuff i don't know i guess i guess i just like more of the the quick hits and the fact that he's just pure evil another part that i, that I wasn't super in love with was uh towards the end when uh uh stroud and i'm blanking on the officer's name but uh the officer that had, uh, had gotten hurt and was in the hospital with her and, and they're sitting there having this intellectual conversation about what michael is mm-hmm. And the fact that, you know, like, neither one of them had anything to do with this one in this current movie. I, I, I don't know. It just it didn't really go over with me. But overall, I really did enjoy the movie, and that's why I went three and three quarters. I should have said this before you guys gave your star ratings, but uh, I, uh, 
I, I should throw out what we gave. Now, Donnie, you weren't on the show back then, episode six, when we did the Halloween from 2018. But, Will, you gave that one three and a half stars. Smoke, you gave that one three and a quarter star. And I gave it three and a half stars. So I don't know if that will affect, you know, Will, what you just said. I mean, you're giving us one three and three quarters. But I, I just figured it was, you know, full disclosure and fairness. If uh, you want to do a just there, there's, there's your opportunity. But otherwise, just leave it. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think I think I'll leave it. I, I will say the one thing that I, I, I guess the reason I probably went so high on this one was the fact that I feel like it like bled from the, the previous one into this one perfectly. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, uh, it did. Like, if you didn't if you didn't know any better, man, you, you would have thought they would have done this at the exact same time that, yeah. that's how smooth this was and i guess one one other thing that that i guess just wasn't my, my favorite about this movie the the whole town aspect of evil dies tonight look i get everybody's scared but I, I don't know that that came off a little corny yeah I, I i hear you a little bit but this isn't like uh the random lynch mob that gets uh put together in christmas evil like you yeah. know so they can all get they all grab pitchforks and and torches and everything to go run after this guy on the on the heat of the moment. You have to think this is literally something that has terrorized this town for forty years at this point. You know, so yeah, yeah it's gonna these these people are gonna be quick to get in a lather over it. You know, for obvious reasons. Yeah, no, no, and, and I guess I guess I get that. Honestly, I'm probably talking myself down the rating now. Yeah, but <laughs> you know what? I hated this two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> What's my lowest score now? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, no. I mean, I I, I get what you're saying, uh, but I guess it's kind of like, have they been tortured with this for 40 years? And, and the reason I say that is, all right, Michael threw down when he was a kid, uh, and then he's been gone for 40 years. And then, you know, like he, he runs through, like I'm under the impression that, that this movie takes place in essentially roughly about a 24-hour span, right? Like from one night, when he was supposed to die in the fire to the next night. Yeah, pretty much. Like, yeah, about a full day or so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's uh, 40 years of nothing happening, and then he gets free. And essentially, in about a 36, 48-hour span, he he lit him up. I I guess I don't know that I would necessarily buy that the town would be that freaked out about it. Yeah. (laughs) Especially considering, you know, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, all the other Halloweens didn't take, take place according to this timeline, right? Yeah, you're in a new timeline you know, back to the future style, the the Biff timeline, right? <laughs> you're in a new yeah. you're in a new timeline here, where like the very first John Carpenter Halloween, then the one we watched three years ago, and now this. So this in this yeah. timeline, this is Halloween three we just watched. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and drop mine down then. Three and a quarter. I guess everything that I started like, you know, after I started talking it out, it just I guess it's not sitting with. I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I think I'll go with three and a quarter. It's fair enough, and, and we'll obviously have more time to ruminate on our uh, star ratings and everything. But just in the interest of fairness to the first one, I just wanted to make sure y'all knew that's what the that's what the lay of the land was on that one. So you know you could adjust accordingly to this one. So uh, you know, fair enough. So. Smoke, I guess that uh, will leave it to you before I give mine. Uh, like I just said, you gave the one from 2018, you gave it three and a quarter star. So yeah. where, where are you at on this one then? And I'll, and talking about that for a minute, even though I know that was back in 2018 when we actually did that, I believe, right, as well? Uh, well, it was, like, it, uh, it was like January of ni- uh, 2019 when we did that episode. Right. Uh, then I would have would have uh, had the time to reevaluate that movie, and I don't know if I changed my rating at all that year, last year when we did the Halloween special episode that year. But yeah. if I had to go back, I might would actually drop that down to three star these days if we were doing that. Not not that I am now because we're not really you know yeah we've yeah. already crossed that bridge a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But uh, for this one, I pretty much echo some of the same sentiments Donnie and Will said. It's the pacing's good. I mean, it, it gets back to that slasher. For, for better or worse, some people would say it's the worst. It gets back to that kind of, you know, somewhat of a formulate slasher from the 80s type, you know, only updated to today's time. So you get that brutality and teenagers doing dumb things. I mean, can't really fault that. It's a slasher movie. We talked about that, too, how some of the critics were faulting it for, you know, saying, oh, why would you do that? That's stupid. You wouldn't do that. Well, it's a slasher movie. You know, for better or worse, it kind of gets back to that mold. I kind of find that a little bit refreshing that it doesn't have to be some sort of existential thing. It's just a slasher movie being a slasher movie, although they still do, you know, modernize it in ways. So I kind of enjoyed that aspect of it. Now, it 
the whole sort of sidetracking in the hospital when uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is in there, you get a little bit of character, a little bit into her character and the police officer's character that when they're kind of bonding again in the hospital. But that whole other subplot of, uh, you know, as we talked about, sort of the, the villagers' night and all that stuff, that kind of sidetracked it for me, that whole hospital scene of them, even though it ended with a guy, when he jumped out the window, you get another splattery gore scene at the end of that. That was kind of long, and it sort of derailed a little bit for me there. So I'll probably dock a little bit for that. A gore that we talked about, again, brutal. Got to enjoy that if you love splatter, and I do. I'm going to go with a three and a quarter star. So the same rating, like I said, I probably would re-rate the original down to three, and I'd give this one a three and a quarter. But uh, So as it stands now, both of them will be three and a quarter stars. Now, it's hilarious that you just said that about the rating from the first one to this one, okay? Because your original rating you gave it, like on that episode, was three stars. When we re-rated oh. it, when we did our re-rating on our first anniversary episode, that's when you gave it three yeah. and a quarter. So now you're saying like <laughs> yeah. you, you, you would like yeah, to have stayed at three. What happens when we're talking about new movies. You know, new movies, because we've only seen them once, twice, maybe three times at the most, as you, you know, when we do an old movie, I, a lot of times I've seen that movie five, six, seven, ten, twenty 20 times, depending on what it is. So my rating's pretty much set in stone. But the more I watch some of these other movies, and hell, we might have to do that somewhere down the road, uh, you know, five years from now. Well, let's rewrite. You know, I've watched this one two or three more times now. And, you know, it's kind of, yeah. it's either I like it more or I like it less. But I think that just comes with the same, same thing for me for listening to a brand new album. Yeah, you know, I might like, wow, this is fucking great. And then, you know, pull it out, you know, listen to it a couple of times, and I pull it out again another month later. I'm like, what? Well, I don't like it quite as much. You know, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's that, a bad that, that might be an episode in the future where we say, like, you know, let's go back to our first, I don't know, 10, 15 episodes, the first yeah. year, whatever, and then let's let's re reevaluate now, you know, so many years later. But that, maybe that's something we can do. But um, to that, I, I think I'm going to uh, – I gave the first one three and a half. So I didn't like this one quite as much as the original. Although, you know, obviously I, I, you have to enjoy the – you know, Michael just going on a killing spree like that, right? There's definitely more action in this one. And I didn't hate it, for sure. Um, but I didn't like this one quite as much as that one. So for that reason, I'm going to give it three and a quarter, just like, you know, Smoke and uh, Will did. So across the board there, I mean, like, it, that's a cumulative score of 3.31. So, you know, on our little scale. So I think that's fair enough. And, you know, we will have the chance to reevaluate, you know, a little down the line or whatever. All right, so with all the star ratings and whatnot out of the way, I'll go ahead and toss to you, Donnie. Connections. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always like to let it finish. Yeah. It's uh, you know <laughs> such a drawn out thing. No, uh, you know you talked about the seamless uh, transition of uh, yeah, there there's been you know uh, uh, quite a bit of well I'll just get to it. 138 uh, cast and crew returned over from Halloween 2018 over to you know Halloween Kills. So that's you know you talked about a seamless transition. You know that, that that's uh, that's pretty significant. Uh, you know as far as the amount of uh, cast and crew that yeah. uh, you know kind of transitioned over. I don't have any uh, uh, specifics um, other than you know. Well, that's enough, right? Like, yeah, you don't really mean to pull out any more connections than you that. Really I mean, don't. That's that's got to so, be. That may not be every single person, but that's got to be the bulk of who worked yeah, on that one, right? That's pretty significant. Yeah, I, I I could not find any specific one that went over. You know, multiple. The, there were a couple of bit actors that uh, kind of you know pulled over into the the Conjuring mm -hmm. uh, universe. Uh, there there was actually a a sing when well, I say a singer he's he's kind of a he he played multiple different roles uh in you know the conjuring universe uh, um uh smoke's favorite uh the curse of Lyrona, as well as uh Annabelle, Annabelle uh, creation and the conjuring um as well as it it was uh one of the uh, uh, he wasn't a composer he was part of the music department his name is Jasper Randall he he goes back to our uh, four of those of those episodes, Curse of Irona, Annabelle Creation, It from uh, 2017, and The Conjuring. But other than that, it was the 138 cast and crew from the original Halloween. Uh, you know, you, you, like I, I've already mentioned, you mentioned the seamless transition over from from that movie, uh, 
you know, over to uh, Howling Kills. Will, that leads us to you. What's the number? We're going to go with 34 on this one. So you got uh, Officer McCabe who got shot in the throat uh, right there towards the beginning uh, with the flashback scene. The 12 firefighter scene, or I'm sorry, the, the 2 through 12 is, is firefighters uh, from the fire scene, which, man, that, that scene was so fun to watch. <laughs> uh, you know, like, like I said, like uh, All Hallows Eve for me was, uh, you know, sometimes can be a little bit, you know, overly gory. Like that, that was brutal and well, now, that was just uh, entertaining. You mentioned All Hallows, Hallows Eve, and it definitely had its moments, but I think you're more referring to uh, Terrifier. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, where it was far more brutal than that. Yeah. Then you have uh, uh, Sandra and Phil, and then I think I think there were like two other people in on that scene from at their house. Dennis, who ended up with the uh, Halloween mask on his face. Marion, Marcus, and Vanessa. By the way, her her getting shot in the face when uh, he knocked the gun around. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> the, the two that you can't help but remember, Big John and Little John. Yeah. Why can't you remember them? <laughs> Very memorable characters. Because huh? they, they they run around the, uh, the the house calling each other's names. <laughs> Damn, Big man. John, Little John. <laughs> and then and then one of them gets killed, and it's just like, oh oh no. Why didn't you call their name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have the uh, second escapee, uh, Lance, uh, when he went for slat. Lonnie and Cameron, the uh, the family tree coming to an end. Tommy and Sheriff Brackett, and I'm going to say about six other <laughs> townspeople getting lit up. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just go ahead and chop the dude's head off? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then, last but not least, Carrie. Just want to kind of interject here. Well, one thing we haven't mentioned that has uh, uh, kind of gained a cult following, uh, at least on the internet, is the the lady with the iron, the yellow iron. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not remembering. Yeah, yeah. Is that from the first the, one? Hmm? Yeah, no, no, it was. I'm sorry, it was in the uh, Halloween Kills. She's gained kind of a cult following. I missed it on the first viewing. Um, but yeah, yeah, like I, I you mean like in the time. in the lynch mob or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I missed like, that. Uh, was it? It was it was Tommy's um, little mob. He had this uh-huh. little lady with a fucking iron. <laughs> and, like it's just an iron. Like uh, how well, long I guess is that that's cord? that's the way like a lynch mob would go though. You just grab Larry's. any blunt. You just Larry's. grab any blunt instrument you could find and just you know, <laughs> let's go. Phenomenal. Uh, Dang, I had to mention that. Sorry. All right, so that leads us to uh, you, Professor Smoke. Gore School. Well, it's no secret. This was a, We've already been talking about it through the whole thing. This is a juicy one. Hell, it might be safe to say it's probably the, over the course of the whole Halloween franchise, it might be the goriest. I'm trying to think back on, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen, like, say, four, five, and six, or whatever, you know, that, that era, that stretch. But, uh, yeah, you well, know. I know for sure those were. I remember those. It's been a while since I've seen those two, but I remember when they came out and I saw them in the theater and was disappointed with that aspect because they came out at that time when there was that backlash on slasher movies, yeah. on gore and violent movie stuff. Yeah, as far as the body count, yeah, you might be right. Like in, in one movie, this might be. Yeah. yeah I think and just I the brutality. Saying that this was the highest uh, kill count yeah. in those movies. Yeah, because a lot of the, yeah. a lot of the Halloween films, like you said, you know, kind of alluded to there, like they don't stack the bodies, right? You know, like there's. There's usually some pretty good yeah, they, kills and they, stuff like that, but there's not like, you know, 20, 30, 40 kills in the movies. And they're not necessarily as uh, brutally, you know, as brutal as they are in this one either, as far as even even the earliest ones, you know, were. Yeah. Were, well, for the time, you know, there was flattery somewhat for their time. But this one just goes all out for it, which is good because, it, you know, that probably affected my star. It definitely did it affect my star rating. If it had not been as flatter filled or, as, you know, like I said, bringing back some of those, that era of the slasher films from the 80s. I would have docked at least another quarter, if not a half star, off of it. Mm-hmm. If, it, if it had just not had that brutality and stuff in it, and just you know, kind of cut back on that, I would have gone with a you know, quarter, probably a three star rating again. Mm-hmm. But uh, but no, I I think it's safe to say that this is up there, upwards of I would go with a 
uh, I'm trying. I'm deciding between a seven and an eight because, and what usually my my rate my views of what's keeping me from one or the other is because of what we haven't got to yet. I'm always kind of trying to decipher that in my mind. There's a lot of of stuff we haven't got to. There's like super gory, you know. Then you got something like Terrifier. So if you're really, I think that's the right now with all the movies we've done. Terrifier is probably the the the, the marker to beat when it comes to splatter. Like you've given off some eight yeah. since then, like Blood Rage, VFW, Demons, uh, Wolf Cop. That was the latest one. So there's been a few. What was? Do you have the Terrifier rating in front of you? Because I don't remember. <laughs> that's actually the, that. like the last one I don't have on here. Like at least on this document that I'm looking at. Like I haven't gone back to the slightly older ones to put all those back in there yet. But conveniently, to... yeah, of well, course. I, I want to say that was that was def- definitively a nine or ten. I have no doubt yeah. about that. I don't remember if I gave it a nine or ten, but it's somewhere in there. Yeah. But this one, and like I said, rating like watching it one time, only having seen it once. Sometimes, you know, when you go back to and you do that, is that could also change. But, I mean, for now, it's going to go with a – I think it's pretty safe to go with an 8. Before I get into what we're going to be doing, you know, our next episode and then the one after that, um, there was one more thing I was wanting to mention about this movie that we didn't really dive into at any point today, the supernatural aspect of it. Mm. Uh, where do you guys land on that? Like, I mean, because, like, it seems to me like, you know, I know this – it's supposed to be like the, you know, he's the embodiment of evil and all that. And like, you can't put this dude down, but like, man, when you've got this dude dead to rights in the street like this, now granted, like you said, uh, Will, uh, why didn't you chop this dude's head off? Right. Or something <laughs> you make sure the job is done, but still like, I mean, the dude stands up, right? <laughs> I mean, they, they shoot him, like beat the shit out of him, do everything. And then like dude stands up and still slaughters him, Right. So like, are they properly introducing a supernatural aspect to it here or not? I guess we can go around the table. Donnie, what do you think? I guess as far as, uh, like, you know, you think of, you know, if you go back through the timeline and, you, you know, you you think of Michael uh, killing his sister at six, you know, at six years old, you know, and you're like, okay, well, yeah, he's got to be like, you know, what, 60s, 70s, you know, because my math isn't great. I went to fucking art school. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't I don't know how old he is now. Yeah, at this point he's but definitely that's a very in, he's definitely it's a very in the specific type of school, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, no, I, I would I mean without you know trying to sit here and figure it out, like I, he's it's safe to say at this point in these films he's in his sixties. Because yeah. that original incident happened in the late sixties and then you fast forward to like nineteen seventy eight, right? And he's like you know, in his early twenties or something like that. Now it's forty years later, so he's easily in his sixties here. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 my thought as well. But mm-hmm. you know, we're you know just kind of going back and forth. You know, just kind of think well, when I say we, like Kenya and I, you know, uh, we're just we're just kind of going back and forth. You know, just kind of uh, think. You mentioned the supernatural aspect. You know, that really doesn't have any sort of age, you know, to it. You know, if, 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 fuck man, you know, I'm open-ended at that. Well, what yeah. do you think? I mean, do you think this is like proper supernatural aspect or is this dude just a freak that can withstand the, the, the pain? I guess, I guess my issue is he's supposed to be pure evil and just, you know, mindless killing, right? Mm-hmm. If we could find out if he had a bullet vest on, I think that would clear some stuff up for me, but he's supposed to be a mindless killer. So you would think that he's probably not running around with a bulletproof vest on. Uh, All that to say, he gets shot plenty in these movies, and he he keeps coming back. Like specifically in this movie, he got shot a handful of times, Mm -hmm. Uh, and it doesn't seem to affect him at all. So I think just to that one aspect, uh, yeah, I think there's some kind of supernatural uh, part to it that or. You know, this is a crazy version of Wolverine. <laughs> Professor, what do you say? Uh, yeah, I mean, what? Well, this, this one's discounting all the other movies, except for the very first Halloween. So we're just gonna have to go on these three right now, and then I guess the fourth one when it comes out. And also, you got you got to take into account uh, Doctor Loomis's words right at the end of uh, Part One after he shoots. I shot him six times. So yeah, people can live, of course, after getting shot six times. But I mean, you shot him a grouping right in the chest, pretty much, and he falls out the second story window hits the ground at that point and then he's gone i mean like that mm-hmm. so 
pretty much you can't you, you pretty much have to have a supernatural aspect in there i think for that because i don't i don't know too many and you know if we're speaking reality here like just a serial killer who's terrorizing town i don't care who it is you get shot six times fall out a second story window you're not just getting right up and running <laughs> like by the time Loomis gets back downstairs you know and you're gone yeah <laughs> so for me personally i think that it would have to almost and i, and I kind of want it to be that way because i've always liked that element of the original house even though they tried to give him more human, more humanity a little later on in Rod Zombie's movies, even, you know, going back into his childhood and everything. Uh, I always liked that aspect of him being an embodiment of the boogeyman and of, of Halloween and evil, dark aspect side of Halloween or whatever. I, I, I like that aspect. So I kind of, I'm, I'm hoping that they do keep it that way and that he, he is supernatural. I agree with what you're saying there. And I, and I, you know, I think I agree somewhat on every, every level with what you, all you guys are saying. It's just that, this one, to me, the Halloween movies and Michael Myers have always somewhat kind of been framed as like, yeah, he's like the embodiment of evil, the boogeyman, right? But, like, it's also still rooted in reality, like, not like, not, say, Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, Freddy's just this dude that, like, uh, apparently, you know, he messed with kids and the parents ganged up on him, burned his ass alive, and now he's come back to life and haunts their dreams, right? So, like, this is a supernatural there's supernatural shit afoot, right? Like, but, but like, this is supposed to be more grounded in reality. Like, well, you can put this dude, you can, you can slow this guy down, but you can't put him down kind of thing. So it's like, but they never come right out and say like, no, this dude ain't alive no more. Right. So what the <laughs> fuck is yeah. he? You know, like that's the thing. That's part of that allure of it too. Yeah. You know, like, and also the fact that you don't really see his face. He's been unmasked. If we're just going by these three films, he's been unmasked twice. Well, 2018, he was in that, cell or in that psychiatric place he didn't have a mask on but they didn't deal yeah. with his face but even though in the first movie and this one you still don't see his face not really i mean it's very brief just a, one frame of the camera maybe that you if you could freeze it on there you could see his face somewhat clearly but but it's so fast and i think that kind of plays into the whole for me it kind of plays into the supernatural aspect of it because you're not going to see what the boogeyman looks like we're not going to show you his full-on face they still don't show his full-on face in this one. i i just want to kind of chime in here uh you know and you know, most of you have kids and, you know, people listening, you know, probably have kids or whatever or not. I, I, I don't fucking know. Um, but, you know, like Roger Rabbit, and this may seem like a weird kind of thing to bring up, but uh, Roger Rabbit, Judge Doom, uh, played by Christopher Lloyd, they knew how to kill off a fucking character. You run over him with a fucking steamroller. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, that doesn't happen with Michael Myers. You can't just, you know, <laughs> recently with a fucking steamroller. Oh, uh, that was uh, Maximum Overdrive. Yeah, Maximum, maximum Overdrive. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> so <laughs> it can run over a kid, you know, and just like, yeah, okay, they, yeah, the kid never exists. But well, I mean, look, it, maybe it's a deeper conversation yeah. for another day, you know, as far as, <laughs> as far yeah, as like, so. you know, getting to the root of what is going on with Michael Myers and in these films and everything. And, uh, I mean, I know that there has to be a certain amount of suspension of disbelief, right? I mean, with all everything we watch here, pretty much, because we are a horror cult film podcast. So, like, we're watching stuff that we're like, all right, well, you have to turn off your, in in some ways, you have to turn off the reality for a little bit, you know, for the next hour and a half while you watch this and then click it back on. But I, I don't know. It's just, it's always been fascinating to me because, like, it's a pretty clear line, say, for instance, with Freddy Krueger. You know what's going on with him. I think Jason's kind of a better comparison, right? Because, like, at first, I think this was something that wasn't supernatural, and then it became supernatural, right? But th this is something, like, it's closer to that, in my opinion. Like, I think at first this was reality, and now it's it's starting to morph into something different over the years and with these new ones, too. You know, so maybe that's another conversation we can have when we watch Halloween Ends next year and we see how they decide to wrap this puppy up. Because, like, everything they've done to this dude up to this point hasn't put him down for good. What the hell do they have to do to put him down, right? <laughs> Stick a piece of dynamite down his throat and then push him off a bridge or something? I'm like, I mean, what do you have to do, you know? But we'll, we'll find out. You know, we'll get there and we'll, we'll see what they do. Yeah. Well, yeah, because the, the third one is called what, Halloween Ends, right? Yeah, so you would assume one. that this is it. Like, whatever whatever happens in this next one, this is it. So, but yeah. you also mentioned the supernatural factor. This, you know, Halloween Ends maybe for, you know, this, uh, yeah. That's a, it's a very interesting concept, you, you know, you kind of um, kind of bring up yeah. at it, what point. You know, but once again. Yeah, well, um, so, far, so far, there's no slasher franchise has ended. 
Friday the 13th was on hiatus, and that's mainly because they were trying to get yeah, the licensing issues. Yeah, this is just a lawsuit right. reasons. Yeah. Otherwise, we probably would have had five more since then. Yeah. So, is it really ended? I mean, this part of it is. It's going to be kind of like Batman. You know, it's like, okay, like you had Christian Bale's, you know, Batman yeah. series, and then somebody else takes it over. It's going to, like, somebody else take over the reins of Halloween if John Carpenter allows it, and then there'll be a whole other. You know, <laughs> and it could, and it could, and it probably will one of these days. You know, like even after it, Halloween ends next year, you know, they'll start it over, or there'll be some continuation, or the spirit of Michael goes into someone else's body, or some shit. You know, like it can keep going. I, I get it, but you know, I think the appeal to me has always been with this is like there is, it's there's a root in reality, and then somewhere along the line, you just kind of lose that tether to reality. Like, all right, this ain't real no more. Like this dude, he should be dead. So like, what the fuck's going on here? So. But you know, no, no, no. once again, yeah. longer maybe it's a longer conversation next year, and we'll revisit it for sure because I'm sure that one will be polarizing as well to see how they wrap this little timeline up. Yeah. So, so all right, so th th all that out of the way, you've got our thoughts. That you know, chew on that for a little while. Maybe you know, if you have any comments or whatever, you can email us and uh, you know, message us in all the usual ways. But right now, we want you to become a patron over on Patreon, Patreon.com/slash AA Spook Show, because between now and the end of the month so like literally on halloween day say like 11 59 p.m october 31st you can uh go over to patreon.com slash aa spook show and you can sign up to become a patron so you can vote on our october poll for what we will watch in november the three choices are hellraiser phantasm and a nightmare on elm street oh man all three great choices that we will probably all get to at yeah. some point oh, we will but... for sure but yeah th yeah this is but also i will add this is also kind of starting uh, this will probably kind of start be a new starting point for us to watch a series so like that's kind of why we chose these three because there's multiple sequels so you know how we went through the conjuring movies in past episodes and uh you know the rob zombie house of a thousand corpses you know devil's rejects all that this this will probably be the beginning beginning of our next series that we'll watch over time you know over the next year or so so just keep that in mind. So that's Hellraiser, Phantasm, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Where do you want us to begin? Uh, choose your own adventure. This, <laughs> this is your choice. So go over to patreon.com slash AA Spook Show to vote between now and the end of the month. Halloween Day, you know, that night, 11.59 p.m., that's when the poll ends. So uh, get on board if you want to have any input there. And also, I will remind you that this Sunday, Halloween Day again, once again, episode 80 will be coming out. And that's our third anniversary Halloween Spectacular 2021. So, you know, we kind of get the wrap-up of the year. You know, our quote-unquote calendar year is the one time of year where we have a chance to, like, truly re-rate the movies and everything that we've talked about. So you want to make sure you come back this Sunday for that. So that's always a big show every year. Plus, it's, you know, just celebrate our third anniversary with us. So we we appreciate everybody listening and all that, you know, throughout the year. So uh, come and join us this Sunday on Halloween Day. You know, make it part of your uh, Halloween celebration. So... After that, we that's when we'll be, uh, the next episode, that's when we'll be talking whichever one you choose. Hellraiser, Phantasm, Nightmare on Elm Street. So we can't really um, tell you what we're going to be watching until you tell us what we're going to be watching. So uh, so make sure you stay tuned for all that information. So I guess that's it, guys. We've said all needs to be said and then some for this one. So that's Halloween Kills from 2021. And, uh, you know, if, if for whatever reason you've listened to this and you haven't gone and seen it, what the hell? Right, we just spoil the shit out of it. So I'm sorry. Fuck you doing? Uh, <laughs> Fuck you doing? Yeah. You know? All right. So for uh, Donnie, Will, Professor Smoke, I'm Josh. We are the All American Spook Show Horror Podcast, and we will talk to you next week.